So guys, I'm not gonna lie. I've really been thinking a lot about the GH7 recently. Um, as you guys might know if you follow the channel, use the GH6 all the time. And it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite camera I've ever used. But that being said, using the new S5 II, using the G9 II, and just exploring those features and those little benefits and tiny improvements that they've made has really made me reconsider the GH7. Um, it just ticks a lot of boxes and it has some pretty incredible features. So, what are those features? Well, obviously, there's the autofocus. Uh, I might have even said I'm not going to talk about the autofocus, but let's be honest, that is one of the big features of the new Panasonic cameras. Um, and for some work, it's really nice. For short films, still I'm choosing the GH6 every time as the A camera. Every time. Uh, just because the image quality and the features, no overheating, a lot of things just make this the perfect narrative tool for me, where you don't really need autofocus. So that being said, I'm not always filming short films or narratives or things like that. I shoot a lot of weddings. I shoot a lot of events. I shoot a lot of interviews, shoot photos things like that and when I shoot those things I'm noticing I'm using the GH6 less and less and I'm using the S5 II and especially the G9 II more and more and even on film sets there's a few times that I pulled out the G9 II for a few shots on a recent project that um, yeah I just appreciated some of the features that were really helping with that particular production um, so let's get into that. So um, I'll go down the list of features that I think would be a great improvement as well as the situations that I use those in all the time. So yeah, the first one is going to be the autofocus. It does make lazy filmmakers, but when you're shooting a wedding or an event or sports or interviews, having one or two cameras with autofocus is actually really, really nice. Um, and so having the G9 II I shoot this almost all the time, but it does worry me because it has some downsides and some missing features compared to the GH6 and GH7. So yeah, and one of those is just going to be the, the GH6 body design. The screen, especially the fan for overheating, coupled with all the new features, is pretty incredible. And so the GH7 basically having the G9 internals and the GH6 outside body externals. That's pretty fantastic. Another thing that came up on this short film a little bit, I mean, I had more control here, but not 100% control. It, uh, but especially with weddings and anything you're shooting vlog in, is just that lower ISO of 500 for DR boost. Now, I love dynamic range boost. It is such an underrated feature, and it works so well, even on the GH6. But the ISO going from 2000 minimum to 500 minimum is really fantastic. And when you're shooting T1.0 lenses on a short film set, uh, I shot on the Mitocons again, by the way, links to that video here. It's really tough to get solid exposure at T1 ISO 2000 shutter speed 50, you know, for 24 frames a second. It's just one of those things. So switching to the G8 9 a few times during that set to get that extra dynamic range and not have to switch down to 250 um, for certain kind of shots and certain sequences um, is really helpful. Um, and, but just in general, the, it works for any kind of project that you're gonna be, especially shooting vlog on, that lower base ISO is very tempting uh, to me for all kinds of production. One thing that's helpful generally, but also on this short film, we shot a lot of handheld and every time I went to an wide angle shot like the Voigtlander 10.5 or anything wider than 12 millimeters essentially uh, I had to was basically forced to pick up the G9 II over the GH6 because there's that warpy wobbliness kind of at the wide angles right so having a camera that could compensate for that with the electronic stabilization that of course this G9 has you can see I'm on a 7.5 right now and it's pretty minimized but not having that on the G uh, not having that on the GH6 made this be my wide angle camera only and made me kind of forego shooting with my big cinema rig that I made for that set 
which was kind of a bummer because I wanted to shoot on the GH6 for the entire project and shooting on the G9, it, it wasn't a big deal, but it just kind of became my dedicated wide angle camera, which again, not the end of the world, but it would be nice to not have to choose, you know, every time I'm shooting handheld, but I want to go wider than 12, I have to choose something other than the GH6, which I consider my main camera most of the time. Another fantastic new feature is the live LUT. Now there's some ways to creatively use this. There's some ways to just apply your vlog LUTs and kind of save yourself some post-production time. Um, but I also use them to, you know, really help me match other cameras from other manufacturers when I'm, you know, a second shooter at a wedding or something like that. Um, I'll make a whole video on that soon on how I do it. But being able to bake in a look, bake in a LUT, and second shoot for anyone has become a pretty big part of my workflow and how I make money uh, and how I get jobs. And so having that ability is even more powerful than I think people know. And at this moment, I'm kind of forced to use my G92 and my S5 II with it because the GH6 doesn't have that capability, which kind of limits my use of that camera once again. So there's just as time goes on, there's more and more situations and shooting scenarios where the GH6 just doesn't work. And like I said before, you know, the S5 II has the crops in 4K60, um, which makes it hard to use for some weddings and loses autofocus, even at 108060, uh, at least unless you're in the APS-C mode. And the G92 has a few overheating issues, especially if you rig it up like um, you would for a short film or I like to do with my GH6 with because HDMI causes heat power delivery charging causes heat and This camera does not do great in hot situations recording for a long time. So Just again the G92 everything is super great about this camera, but that overheating and Yeah, I don't know something to, the G the GH6 body design is the best that Panasonic's ever done, except maybe the S1H, probably tied there. And so having, again, the G92 internals in the GH6 body, with all of the features, the lower DR boost, the fan, the body, the autofocus, the live LUTs and real-time LUTs, um, the warping and wide angle electro electronic stabilization, uh, there's no one feature here that's like mind blowing to me and it's gonna change my life. But it really does feel like my workflow is split between two cameras, which is the G92 for weddings and events, unless it overheats, and the GH6 for weddings and events, but then I have to work around some of the high uh, dynamic range boost modes or the lack of stabilization for handheld and all this stuff. So the G GH7 really is just feeling like a replacement for both of those cameras. Although I probably would keep the GH6, but there are a few things holding me back, which is the G92 hasn't really overheated that much for me. You know, it's been okay. Um, especially if I use it sparingly, maybe use a fan from Ulanzi on it. Um, but there's other things too. The cost, you know, it's $2,200. If it went down to 2000, it'd be a little easier pill to swallow. And on top of that, there's some image quality concerns, you know, um, the S5 II and the G9 II just have a different look to it, you know. I think the, the GH6 has the best looking color science of any camera I've used personally, at least in the Lumix line. And the flexibility of the V-Log, the really rich middle, you know, warm tones for skin just look fantastic, whether it's V-Log or whether you're using a standard or natural profile. And, you know, there, it's not a perfect image, you know. It's a little noisy, even especially using DR Boost. It's got some of the streaking things, which I barely have run into, but I have run into. And the image can be a little brittle. If you underexpose and you do a really strong teal and orange, the chromatic noise can really be enhanced on the GH6. So it's not a perfect image, but it is a really organic, nice image to me compared to like the GH5 or compared to like the G92 or the S5 II, which has a little bit of a more digital, sharp, noise reduced image. I'm, we're nitpicking here, but to me and a lot of people, that has been something that they've noticed when they really 
dive in deep with these cameras. But is that enough to dissuade me from all those other benefits? I'm not sure, you know, I, I, I'm really struggling because that is the one thing. If I, the, the GH7 really just has not quite as nice of an image to me. So between that and the cost, those are the only downsides, which is pretty crazy. So yeah, I mean, I would definitely lose some money on the G9 too. I definitely have to fork some cash over for the GH7, um, but it's my perfect camera. I'm not sold on full frame. I still use Micro Four Thirds for the most part, um, just because I like the form factor and the lenses and the lack of crops and the unlimited recording, no crops in every mode. It just works better for my workflow, doing weddings, doing films. And I really do see this, these as like the super 16s of digital cameras where you're kind of cutting that corner but getting a bunch of other benefits for that and the gh7 is still a fantastic value at 2200 dollars. so yeah anyway those are just my general thoughts on the gh7 and why i'm probably gonna have to get it but what do you guys think are those benefits you know it's really upgrade by a thousand cuts you know there's no one big thing outside of the autofocus that is that compelling to me but those other little things really have started adding up in my mind as i think about this camera more um would i sell the g92 would i sell the gh6 so anyway let's just get into some of those reasons and go through some of my thought processes and please like comment down below let me know if i'm crazy for wanting this camera whether I should just switch to full frame once and for all, or if I'm making any kind of sense. So let me know for sure. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching, listening to my rants. If you have any advice for me or any thoughts on my thoughts, let me know for sure. It really helps out. And while you're down there, if you feel like it, go ahead and subscribe. It really does help out a lot doing all these interactions and subscribing. And if you did subscribe, I'll see you when I see you.